Hello, I'm Zonal Fear and welcome to another video on the TechQuest. Your eyes don't deceive you. Back in June, I took a look at the Ryzen 3 4100, a budget processor that I purchased for just £24 new. For that money, I quite liked it, and its performance combined with the 1660 Super was pretty good overall. So why am I revisiting it today? Well, during my video there were a couple of games that had poor 0.1% numbers, and I wasn't happy about them. So while I have been doing other videos, I have been meaning to swing back around to the 4100 to take a look at those percentile numbers on a couple of those games. I set up the Ryzen 4100 on a bench again this week, and this time I ensured there was no stone left unturned. I started with a fresh install of Windows 11, and ensured that the games were running from fast drives. In the case of GTA 5 in my last video, I inadvertently tested from a mechanical drive having been transferring files a couple of weeks before. I'm not a fan of making mistakes, so I'm going to be overcorrecting that one in this video. As part of that overcorrection, I'll be using higher end parts too. Initially I tested this with a B450 board, more than good enough of course, but I've since replaced the slightly older B450 stuff with newer B550 motherboards. Today I'll be testing the Ryzen 4100 on a Gigabyte B550 Gaming XV2, and I've paired this up with 16 gigs of DDR4 3200MHz Corsair Vengeance. For the graphics, I've gone with the GeForce RTX 2060 I use for testing. Again, another recent purchase, although broadly similar in performance to the 1660 Super the 4100 was initially tested with. Rounding up all of this, Windows is installed to an NVMe drive, and all games testers today were installed on an SSD connected directly to the motherboard. I'm using the latest NVIDIA drivers as of the time of recording, freshly installed with the rest of the machine. On top of all of this, I've since added a bunch of often requested games since the original review and I'll be testing those two. Here's a full bench setup. I covered the Ryzen 4100 extensively in my last video, so if you want to know more, feel free to check out my earlier video on it. I'll leave a link at the end of this one. We have a lot to cover today, so go grab a drink, sit back and relax as I revisit the £24 Ryzen 4100. We start off as always with the wastelands of Fallout 4. At 1080p and using the Ultra preset, the Ryzen 4100 performed remarkably similar to the performance we saw last time. A smooth overall experience, even when things did start getting busier. The numbers overall looked the same too. The average was 59.9, and the 1% came in at 58.7. We did see a significant increase on the 0.1% figure though, at 29.3 FPS. This was better than the, on the 1660 Super, and this will translate into an overall better time in the Commonwealth. Spider-Man ran fantastic. At 1080p and using the high preset, with DLSS set to balance, the Ryzen had absolutely no problems driving the RTX 2060 here, with the seeing great overall system usage on a game that was an excellent experience overall. The 4100 didn't miss a beat here, and the percentile figures were outstanding as well. Average was 92.1, with the percents coming in at 53.8 and 35.5, so you're in for a pretty flawless experience. Dying Light was also superb. At 1080p high, the Ryzen 4100 and RTX 2060 once again delivered an excellent overall experience, with the game performing brilliantly, even in the downtown areas where you'll spend most of the game. Overall numbers were once again great, average was 124.4, with 1% coming in at 81.2, and 0.1 at 54.6. This felt really good to play, and you won't be disappointed. Red Dead Redemption 1 was an easy meal for the 4100. At 1080p and using the game's high preset, once again the 4100 provided a great experience all around, no matter where you were. In the outback, the game ran well into triple digits, only lowering to the 80s when you hit towns like Armadillo, which isn't unique to the Ryzen 4100. You spend most of your time out in the wilds, so you'll be seeing the high numbers here rather than town numbers. Average is 117.8, with solid percentile figures too. 1% at 68.3, and 0.1% at 50.6. Great overall. Dead Island 2 was also pretty great. At 1080p and using the game's medium preset, overall performance was pretty solid. During my playtime, there was a single stutter I captured on video, which accounts for the 0.1% being a little off. But as you can see here, it was overall pretty good, and you'll have a great time irrespective of my numbers here. Average was 91.2, with percents being 53.1 and 6.8. Horizon Zero Dawn was excellent. At 1080p and using the game's original preset with DLSS enabled, the 4100 had no issues whatsoever here and provided us with some great playtime. It was smooth, responsive and backed up by great figures for its great performance. Average was 98.6 with percentile figures being 56.8 and 48.3 for 1% and 0.1% respectively. Another winner, GTA 5 Legacy, the game that made me retest the 4100 and this time most definitely on an SSD ran much, much better than before. Racing through the downtown areas, that 0.1% was much improved over the initial test, 
and overall it was fantastic with no problems to report. Average was 98.3 with those all important percentile figures being equally as good. 1% at 68.7 with 0.1% just under 60 FPS at 59.1. Improved right across the board although the RTX 2060 will no doubt have a good bit to do with that too. Red Dead Redemption 2 was okay. When you were out in the wild west, frame rates were pretty good, but once you hit the towns, the Ryzen 4100 became the limiting factor. Towns tend to be more CPU heavy, and we did see full utilization in Valentine as the Ryzen 4100 reached its maximum potential, resulting in a sub 60 FPS frame rate. Still wasn't bad though, even in towns, and you'll be in for a good time overall. Average was 70.4, with percentile figures being good enough with some minor issues. 1% at 49.1, 0.1 at just 15.9. Similar can be said for Cyberpunk. On foot, you could see above 70 FPS, but driving through downtown was particularly taxing on the 4100, and it did struggle in parts. At 1080p high and using DLSS, the 4100 did okay, and this is more than playable, but keep in mind that performance isn't perfect the busier things get. Average overall performance was 60.3, with percentile figures being 35.8 and 10.9 for 1 and 0.1%. It's not bad, but we're really pushing the £24 processor quite hard here. The Precinct, a top-down cop game, did pretty well. At 1080p medium, the game looked pretty great, played well and performed as good as it looks, with solid numbers overall keeping you in the chase. Average was 76 on the dot, with a 1% of 53 and 0.1% at 41.7. This was pretty great overall. Fallout New Vegas is Fallout New Vegas. You'll get a good time overall, alongside all of the usual performance quirks that come with it. Rich or poor, Vegas doesn't really care. Every PC gets the same treatment in the Mojave. The Dead Space Remake. An incredible game, and if you own a next-gen console, you should probably play it on that. Dead Space is one of those games that just seems to run poorly on everything it touches, and almost every installation on all of the hardware I have tested seems to have the same stuttering issues that dog my playtime with it. I've seen Dead Space stutter on an RTX 2080 Ti like this, and that card is no slouch. The average was absolutely fine at 105.9, but as always, those percentile figures were appalling at 5.9 and 2.8. Dead Space just isn't consistent enough to enjoy. Borderlands 2, on the other hand, ran great. At 1080p, with all of the graphical options maxed out, the 4100 had no issues, and Borderlands was a fantastic experience all around, with top-notch performance reflected in the numbers across the board. Average was 159.4, with 1% at 95.6, and 0.1% at 61.5. You're in for a great time. Counter-Strike 2 was another solid experience overall. At 1080p and using the low settings with shadows set to high, CS2 was pretty playable. It was a little odd that we still had plenty of power on tap that wasn't being used. Both the CPU and GPU weren't fully utilized, but with an average of 104.3, you will still have an enjoyable experience. Percentile figures were okay, if nothing remarkable, 1% at 38.2, with 0.1% coming in a little lower than I'd like at 25.9. Another free to play now, Marvel Rivals. We've had some problems here, brought about by the quad core rising starting to struggle. It was playable overall at 1080p high, but the Ryzen 4100 is holding us back, and you'll feel where the game asks for more than the 4100 can give. Average was 61.7, but the percentile numbers are a problem. 1% at 18.6, and 0.1% at just 3.9. You'll do okay, but keep in mind that 4100 is really going to hold you back here. Robocop now. The making of this video has actually been around a month, and since then I've started other projects too. Remember how I said I'm no fan of making mistakes? Well, it turns out that I've overwritten the bench data file for the 4100 without realising at some point in the last month. Rather than omitting the final two games though, I've decided to include them as is in the video before I go and give myself a good talking to. Robocop ran pretty great in my playtime with it, with a frame rate that stuck above 60 FPS almost all of the time. There are very rare drops just below that, but those are the exception. And finally, The Division 2. At 1080p high, this also performed pretty well overall. Outside areas would see above 80 FPS, with inside missions taking us up to three figures. Overall, the Ryzen 4100 had no issues with The Division, and you're in for a really good time. And that's a wrap for today. Well, kind of. <laughs>I already reviewed the £24 Ryzen 4100 a few months back, and my opinion on it hasn't changed. If you can find it for that price and want to build an ultra low cost gaming PC, the 4100 still fills that gap nicely. I could have got away with just retesting GTA 5, but that's not my style. I'm an imperfect perfectionist, and combined with a couple of often requested games recently added to testing since my initial review, I wanted to take another look at the Ryzen 4100 again anyway. 
I'm still on the fence about buying a Ryzen 4500, a 6 core CPU, not much more than you can get the 4100 for now, but we'll see. Anyway, I've been Zonoff here, and thanks for watching. Until next time, bye bye.